Well, praise God for a new day, perhaps a new start, uh, new opportunities, maybe even a whole new perspective on life and the world. In Psalm 105, 1 through 4, the psalmist declared these words, Give praise to the Lord, proclaim his name, make known among the nations what he has done. Sing to him, sing praise to him, tell of all his wonderful acts. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Look to the Lord in his strength. Seek his face always. Interesting thought. If we direct our praise and honor unto God continually, we will find ourselves with a whole new outlook, a, a whole new perspective on life. Just saying. Well, today we're moving into our seventh study under this topic of following by faith. I do hope these short messages are both encouraging you in your daily walk as well as building and strengthening your spiritual walk. Now our topic today is God uses our groaning. Perhaps a, a bit odd maybe, but let's take a look at what God would have us to glean from this subject from his word today. I want to begin by sharing Romans chapter 8 verses 22 to 30 with you before we go any further. Beginning with verse 22, Paul writes, For we know that the whole creation has been groaning together with labor pains until now. And not only that, but we ourselves who have the Spirit as the first fruits, we also groan within ourselves, eagerly awaiting for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. Now in this hope we were saved, yet hope that is seen is not hope, because who hopes for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with patience. In the same way, the Spirit also joins to help in our weakness, because we do not know what to pray for as we should. But the Spirit himself intercedes for us with unspoken groanings. And he who searches the hearts knows the Spirit's mindset, because he intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know that all things work together for the good of those who love God and those who are called according to his purpose. For those he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, so that he would be the firstborn among, among many brothers. And those he predestined, he also called, and those he called, he also justified, and those he justified, he also glorified. Praise God. Thank you for his word. You know, back in 1956, there were five young missionaries who met their fate at the hands of an unreached people group deep in the Amazon jungles of Ecuador. The tribe they were attempting to make personal contact with was known as the Alcas, later to be known as the Waronis. Their efforts did not die with them, but family members continued the work these five young men had started, eventually having tremendous success. Decades later, Steve Saint, the son of one of the five, reflected on what happened to his father as well as the bond he had now built with the tribe by simply declaring what the Waroni meant for evil, God used for good. Now, in our scripture passage today, Paul acknowledges to the believers in Rome that there would be pain and suffering and mourning on this earth. And he describes these feelings uh, as groans or groaning in verses 22 and 23 and even 26. Now, in the original language, a, a groan could mean an inward, unexpressed feeling of sorrow. I'm sure you felt that before. Without a doubt, we've experienced an enormous amount of groaning. Perhaps when we receive terrible news uh, about a friend or family member, or we're given a life-altering diagnosis, or at the loss of a loved one. Perhaps during such times we discover it to be difficult to even know how to pray, but Paul encourages us by assuring us in verses 26 and 27 that it is in such time as these that the Spirit himself intercedes on our behalf. 
Well, Paul then moves into kind of a change of thought as he boldly declares that even during times of suffering, God remains in control. We find a promise in verses 28 through 30 that even our groaning can be used by God for his good. Now, Paul asserts that God's sovereignty is ultimately for the Lord's glory. We find this reflected in something that Jesus told his disciples that we find in John 16, 33, where he said, In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Praise God that even amid our pain and suffering, which are common to all of us, God can and he will use our groaning for his good. Perhaps you have experienced God using a difficult circumstance in your life for his good. Perhaps you have experienced the Holy Spirit's intercession on your behalf when you just didn't know how to pray. Perhaps you are experiencing something significant in your life right now that you need to turn over and let God handle. As your soul is groaning in anguish today, allow the Holy Spirit to console you as he is making intercession for you. Now, let me assure you, God is faithful, and he is there to help each of us through even our most difficult trials and tribulations. Let me encourage you to hand your troubles off to the Lord today and simply place your trust in him to take care of you. Until next time.